Thank you for the introduction. My name is Matthew Mullen. I'm a surgery resident at the University of Virginia. We have no disclosures. Acute kidney injury is a major cause of morbidity following colorectal surgery, occurring in 5 to 15 percent of patients who undergo major, major colon or rectal resection. Ureteral injury is a feared complication during colon or rectal resection with an incidence of 0.2 to 7.6 percent. Prophylactic ureteral stents are often placed prior to colorectal surgery to assist in the identification and protection of the ureters, particularly the left ureter during laparoscopic resection of the sigmoid colon or rectum. Data has inconsistently shown a reduction in ureteral injury with laparoscopic col colorectal resection. However, improved rates of intraoperative identification of iatrogenic ureteral injuries has been dem demonstrated in patients with stents. Prophylactic ureteral stents have not been shown to be a risk factor for postoperative acute kidney injury, aside from few case reports which describe reflux anuria in patients. The purpose of this study was to assess the incidence of acute kidney injury in patients with prophylactic ureteral stents in colorectal surgery. We hypothesize that ureteral stents increase the risk of acute kidney injury when placed prophylactically in colorectal surgery patients. To perform this study, we reviewed the records of all patients who underwent colon or rectal resection at our institution for a 10-year period between 2005 and 2015 in a prospectively created database. Patients with baseline chronic kidney disease, preoperative acute kidney injury, intraoperative ureteral injury, and postoperative ureteral stent placement were excluded from the analysis. Acute kidney injury was defined using the rifle criteria which is an increase in serum creatinine by two to three times a patient's preoperative baseline or a decrease in GFR by more than 50% baseline. 30-day postoperative outcomes were obtained using the UVA NISQIP data set. This data set, importantly, is not a sample of patients who underwent colorectal surgery at our institution, but all patients over the time period at our institution. Our primary outcome was the development of acute kidney injury in the postoperative period. Secondary outcomes included need for hemodialysis, septic shock, and cost of hospitalization. A univariate analysis included what was first performed to compare outcomes in patients who did and did not have ureteral stents placed. Next, a multivariate logistic regression was performed to identify independent predictors of acute kidney injury. Overall, 3,446 patients were included in the study over the 10-year period. 160 of which had preoperative ureteral stents placed. Stented patients had higher rates of concurrent procedures performed, longer operative times, as well as contaminated and infection wo infected wounds compared with non-stented patients. Acute kidney injury occurred in 11% of patients overall in the data set. The rate of acute kidney injury was higher at 32% in patients who received preoperative ureteral stents compared to 10% in those who were not stented. With regards to secondary outcomes, the only other outcome that was statistically differ different among the groups was the total cost of hospitalization, with a stented group hospitalization costing approximately $24,000 compared with $16,000 in those who were not stented. Multivariate logistic regression identified several independent predictors of AKI following colorectal surgery, including age, BMI, ureteral stents, functional status, and procedure duration, with stent, stent placement a strong predictor of acute kidney injury. One obvious question is why might ureteral stents lead to acute kidney injury? There have been two proposed theories for the mechanism that stents may cause reflux anuria, and AKI may be related to either or both of these mechanisms. The first is the neurovascular hypothesis, where injury and irritation to the ureter causes vasoconstriction of the re renal arterial system, leading to decreased or cessation of blood flow temporarily, decreased blood filtration, and thus decreased urine production. The second mechanism involves edema of the ureter, causing obstruction at the ureterovesical junction, causing a post-renal obstruction. To conclude, prophylactic ureteral stents were found to be independently associated with increased rates of acute kidney injury in colorectal patients at our institution. 
In our experience, 31% of patients with stents developed post-operative acute kidney injury compared to 10% in those without stents. Acute kidney injury was typically self-limited with only 1.3% progressing to require hemodialysis. Ureteral stents increased the cost of hospitalization by a median of $8,000 in our patient population. While ureteral stents may assist in identification of the ureter during colectomy, increased hospital costs, length of operation, and acute kidney injury risks must be considered. And more research to assess the link between ureteral stents and AKI warrants further investigation. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. James Ovo from Augusta, Georgia. So um, what kind of decision did you make to um, have somebody undergo prophylactic ureter stent? And then perhaps my suspicion is that um, those people who did receive prophylactic ureter stent had um, um, compounded by the perhaps like previous surgical history and then more comorbidity requiring prophylactic um, ureter stent. Yeah, that's definitely true. And with the retrospective study, we weren't able to look specifically at the reason that stents were placed, but we found that they were typically placed in patients who had multiple, multiple procedures performed in the operating room and longer operations, which would indicate more challenging dissection and reoperative cases. Comment is sort of along similar lines. Uh, the association can't really be implied to be causal, because it, it may well be confounded between acute kidney injury and stents. Uh, other factors that you didn't mention, uh, what about the perioperative use of anti-inflammatory medications? What about uh, the fluid management perioperatively? I noticed that those with uh, stents had longer operations, and also the surgeon's initial intent for placing the stent. Mm -hmm. It may well be that for some reason that was a selected group that had a higher risk of AKI, and the, and the stents were associated with that rather than the actual use of the stent. Yeah, I mean, those are all really good points. We hope that our logistic regression takes into account the patients that have comorbidities that put them at higher risk of developing acute kidney injury. With regards to your other question, we weren't able to look back to see which patients received Toradol postoperatively, and the um, fluid balance that they had before and after surgery was only available for the data after we introduced our electronic medical record, so that was really the second half of our population. So just to increase the number of patients, we were not able to include that. Do you think the difference in operative times between the two groups, stent versus no stent, was accounted for by the actual time to place the stent, or did you look at that at all? It's a, it's a good point. Um, probably in part, uh, but typically patients who are stented have a more challenging operation because it's either a patient with bad diverticular disease or um, a reoperation. And then did you look at uh, unilateral versus bilateral stent placement? We did not. We just said it was binary. So we just said yes or no whether or not they had a stent placed. Thank you very much.